Over the last 40 to 50 years, the average violent offender in America, including the average teenage offender, has become older, not younger. In addition, violent offenses by teens have become significantly less serious over the last 50 years. They are more likely to be misdemeanors than felonies and to involve violent behavior other than murder. The average younger teen in recent years is much less likely to be a murderer or other serious criminal offender, both in absolute rate and compared to older teens and older adults. There has been an especially dramatic drop in murder and other serious crimes by younger teens over the last 10 to 15 years. The declining age of all murder arrestees is not a recent trend, but rather occurred from the 1960s to the early 1990s. Violent offenders have been increasing in age steadily for three decades, and offenders who have committed serious offenses have been aging since 1968. The findings of this study challenge news reports and the conclusions of interest groups who have raised the alarm that today's seriously violent teens and children are younger than in previous years. This atmosphere has fostered irrational fear among members of the public, precipitating harsh crackdowns and punishments for youth, who are perceived as a dangerous demographic that must be closely monitored restricted, and punished. Using the FBI's annual arrest data for many key offenses by age, this study calculated the proportion of all teenage murder arrestees who were younger than 15 years old. The rate of murder arrests of those ages 10 to 14 compared with the rate for ages 10 to 19 as a whole, and the median ages of teen offenders over time. One of the criminal who started their crime, at a young age was John Lazelle Ballantini. John Lazelle Ballantini, was born on January 30, 1969. In 1983, Ballantini committed burglary and theft of property by breaking into a high school Jrotk building and stealing several rifles and pairs of military fatigues. In December 1986, Ballantini broke into a Walmart store, and attempted to steal a large quantity of firearms. Ballantini was convicted of burglary and attempted theft of property arising over the Walmart incident, and received a five-year prison sentence. In 1989, Ballantini was convicted of an additional robbery and received a five-year prison sentence. In November 1996, Ballantini broke into a Newport, Arkansas, home and abducted the female resident, forcing her into a two-door car. The resident escaped, when Ballantini stopped at a convenience store to get cigarettes. In the early morning hours of January 21, 1998, Ballantini, armed with a 32 automatic pistol, crawled through a window to enter a home which he used to share with Misty Kaler, a woman he was dating. Once inside, Ballantini shot and killed three teens, Mark Kaler, Jr., 17, Misty's brother, Kai Gare, 15 and Stephen Brady Watson, 15, as they slept. Each victim was shot in the head. Ballantini fled to New Mexico, but was later arrested in Houston, where he confessed to the crimes. Finally, in July 1998, while awaiting transfer to Potter County on the capital murder charge, Ballantini became uncooperative and argumentative with Harris County Sheriff's deputies. Ballantini knocked down a female deputy's hand and struck another officer in the mouth with his right elbow and knocked the officer into a wall. Several deputies were needed to restrain Ballantini, who kept resisting, kicking, and throwing punches. Ballantini was sentenced to death in 1999 for shooting and killing three teenagers in Amarillo, Texas. One of the victims, 
Mark Kaler, was the brother of Ballantini's ex-girlfriend and had been openly hostile about the couple's interracial relationship. According to Balatin, Kaler used racist slurs and at one point threatened to kill Ballantini after stealing multiple guns. Ballantini confessed to the murders, but argued that he may have been spared the death penalty if not for pervasive racial bias at his trial. The jury that convicted and sentenced Ballantini was all white except for one juror of Hispanic descent. Lawyers for Ballantini told the Supreme Court they had uncovered new evidence of animosity toward black people and interracial couples by the jury's foreperson who said during jury deliberation that he would personally hunt down and kill Ballantini if he was paroled. The foreperson, Ballantini's lawyers argued, also did not disclose disqualifying violent incidents in his past and intimidated jurors who said that they did not want to give the death sentence. One juror, when asked by prosecutors after the verdict if she had been able to express her views, pointed to the foreperson and said, he wouldn't let us. A Texas judge ruled that Ballantini's execution should be delayed because his lawyers were not properly notified of the execution date. But on Wednesday morning, a Texas appeals court reinstated the execution prompting Ballantini to seek emergency relief at the Supreme Court. Ballantini urged the justices to take his case to determine whether the evidence of racial bias and disqualifying omissions violated his constitutional rights under Pena Rodriguez v. Colorado and Buck v. Davis. He wrote that the case should at least be held pending the court's decision in Cruz v. Arizona a death penalty case involving state procedural rules that was argued at the Supreme Court in November. Texas countered that Ballantini raised highly fact-bound questions at a stage where there is no fact-finding and that the court did not have jurisdiction over claims adequately dismissed by state courts. The state denied that any of the juror declarations demonstrate that the verdict was directly animated by racial stereotypes or animus, and, therefore, Ballantini's case did not satisfy the Pena Rodriguez standard. Further, the state said, the jury foreperson's claims about his past were so far-fetched that his declaration could not be relied on. After the judge withdrew Ballantini's execution date and warrant, the execution was postponed by the judge because the inmates' attorneys had not been properly warned of the impending lethal injection. State legislation requires such notification as state legislation requires this be notified. Ballantini has spent almost 25 years on death row awaiting his execution. A divided Texas Court of Criminal Appeals on Wednesday morning, February 8, 2023, reinstated the execution order and warrant at the request of prosecutors in Potter County, where Ballantini was convicted. Sean Nolan, one of Ballantini's attorneys, said the reinstatement will surely violate due process, and he planned to file various appeals including with the U.S. Supreme Court. Ballantini's attorneys had also urged the Court of Criminal Appeals to halt the execution so they could submit fresh appeals based on information they had learned about the jury's decision to execute him. His attorneys claimed that they had fresh information regarding the jury Dory England, for persons long-standing racism in their request. According to the application, the foreperson believed that interracial partnerships, like the one Ballantini had with his ex-girlfriend, a part of their petition included a statement from Lola Perkins who had been married to England's brother and who said England was racist against black people because that is how he was raised. 
Valentin he is one of five death row convicts in Texas who had joined a lawsuit to prevent the use of allegedly hazardous and outdated execution medications by the state's prison system. Although a civil court judge in Austin initially agreed with the allegations, the state's highest two courts permitted the execution of two of the prisoners. They say the state's supply of medications for executions is safe. John Lazelle Balantini was executed on 8 February 2023 at 6.36 p.m. in Huntsville, Texas. Balantini is the sixth prisoner executed in the United States this year and the third in Texas. Although Balantini confessed to the murders, his current lawyers have argued that racism pervaded the trial, leading jurors to hand down a death sentence rather than life in prison. His last words were, I want to thank y'all. I love y'all for supporting me. I want to apologize for the wrong I did to y'all. Forgive me, I'm ready. He was 54 years at the time of his execution.